Hello and welcome to the second ever Knit Into The Week with me. My name is Paige and I am the face behind the Knitting Page channel here on YouTube and today is going to be hopefully a short video where I talk about my experience racing the Xterra Sleeping Giant Triathlon and it's just going to be a fun video for you to knit to to start your week off to. But I will be knitting on the Terrazzo Slipover by Fatigue Knit and this is a slipover that I am making for my mom. I'm using vintage Barocco in this beautiful lilac colorway that I've had in my stash for forever. And my mom loves the color purple and she really wanted a sweater vest and so I was like, I honestly already have yarn in stash. I sent her a whole bunch of patterns for her to choose from and this is one that she liked. We decided to make the modification of changing the neck from a turtleneck to a nice little just regular crew neck collar um, and I'm working on the back little flap for today's episode and I'm really hoping I can finish it today because I will be leaving to head back to Kingston tomorrow morning and I won't be seeing my parents until I graduate in November and I would really like to have this done so I can give it to my mom and have her wear it so let's get started on my experience at the triathlon and so for those of you that don't know what a triathlon is it is a race where you do a swim you bike and then you run and so most triathlons are uh sorry most triathlons are done on the road and so you swim in like a lake a river an ocean whatever and then you hop on your road bike and you bike on roads and then you get off your road bike and you put on your running shoes and then you run also on roads. Sometimes you'll run on a path, but for the most part, it's all very untechnical and it's all about speed, engine, less so about skill. But the Xterra series is all off-road. So you still swim in a lake, but then instead of hopping onto a road bike, you hop onto a mountain bike and it has to be a mountain bike. It can't be a gravel bike or any other bike. It has to be a mountain bike. And so the one that I did was located in Thunder Bay, Ontario, which is a Northern city in Ontario and it's located on Lake Superior. But thankfully we did not have to swim in Lake Superior because that is honestly probably one of the coldest lakes in the world. It is the largest lake by um, surface area, not by volume. Like Baikal in Russia, I believe, is the largest lake by volume. Anyways, um, we swam in a little lake in town called <laughs> Boulevard Lake, and it is like a channel that had been turned into a lake uh, via a dam. And so there's actually a pretty good current in this lake. Um, <laughs> the current river is actually the river that makes the lake. And yeah, I so I made the decision to sign up for this triathlon at like 11 p.m. on the night that registration closed. I mostly run. I'm a fairly high level uh, runner, like I can get elite entries into road races and whatnot, but I've dabbled in triathlon in the past, but I have not prioritized cycling or swimming in a very long time. But my boyfriend, he had signed up for this race like a long, long time ago. And so Anyways, we were coming up to visit my parents. He was coming up to do the race. And I was like, I feel like I'm going to get FOMO if I don't participate. And as I mentioned in my like podcast, the last time I did this race was 2019. And I actually won the race, having it be my first ever triathlon. But the old course was not the current course. It was a course in Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. And the course was incredibly beginner friendly in terms of mountain biking it was very very non-technical and so as long as you had a good engine and you were aerobically fit you could do really well on that course the course that i did yesterday was not that the course that i did yesterday was very technical for someone that is not a mountain biker <laughs> and so i haven't ridden a mountain bike in probably two years I don't love mountain biking because I'm honestly, I'm not that good at it. And I tend to gravitate towards things that I am good at. And mountain biking is, in my opinion, a lot more dangerous than road cycling, just in terms of you falling off your bike, hitting a tree, crashing a root, like crashing into a rock. Like, yeah, I just, mountain biking is a bit more of a 
feel like all my friends are like, I crashed and I got this like crazy scar or I got this crazy cut or I got this crazy bruise or I broke my collarbone. And so I mountain bike very cautiously. And also because I don't mountain bike, it means I'm extra slow. So anyways, my boyfriend and I got to Thunder Bay on Wednesday night and we ran the run course. And the run course was also quite technical, but I mean, running is running. I definitely feel more in control on my feet than I do on a two wheel bike. We rode the bike course on Thursday. <laughs> And I did a lot of running with my bike instead of riding my bike, especially on the technical portions. And so this bike course, by the way, is 26 kilometers on single track trails where you go up and down over routes, over rocks, over bridges. There were some sections of the course that were on double track trails, which are trails wide enough for two bikes to ride beside each other, where single track trails, only one bike can fit on the trail. And so you either have to like step off your bike and step into the bush to let someone pass or wait for a double track section to come up before you can let someone pass. And so we rode the, the course and I was like, I am so slow. Like I'm so uncomfortable on this mountain bike. I am so slow. I am going to be out here for forever, but you know, I've signed up. I've paid my $200 to enter this race. Like I'm going to commit to it and I'm gonna get it done. And hopefully on race day, there'll be some like race day adrenaline that can just help me just, just a smidge. Um, and so, yeah, I was, incredibly nervous for the mountain bike to say the least it was funny my mom works at like a outdoor store here in thunder bay a couple days a week and we went in to go see her and to go buy trail shoes because neither of us brought trail running shoes and the course is incredibly technical so we were like we should go buy some trail shoes and everyone's like how is the course how is the and i was like i'm gonna be so slow I, I'm terrified. It's, it's really scary. I, yeah, for someone that doesn't know how to mountain bike and doesn't feel confident on the mountain bike, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a long race. But I'm like, I, yeah, I've committed to it and we're just, we're just going to get through it. And like, I was like, mom, I'm not going to win this one. Like there are people that mountain, like there's a mountain bike club here in Thunder Bay and they race like every week and they're like super competent on the mountain bike and so like just lower the expectations and i honestly was having a bit of a difficulty with like my ego because i oh like i'm a competitive person i want to do well but i i like didn't have the confidence and i don't have the skill to like compete against people that have been mountain biking for forever and are on bikes that cost like 10 times the price of the bike that I was on. And anyways, I was like, if I can survive this race and I don't crash and I like just get to the finish line, it's going to be a success. And so flash forward, it's Saturday morning, maybe TMI, but I am actually sick to my stomach and I'm in the washroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't think I can do this. But, you know, kind of tried to shut my brain off and just go through the motions, get ready to race and made it, made it to the start line. Begrudgingly, we all woke up. So my parents raced a trail race, like just a run um, that morning. And then both my boyfriend and I raced the full distance Xterra triathlon. So we started off the race with a 1500 meter swim where we did two laps of going out and back in this boulevard lake which has a nice strong current in it and the start of the race so there's a whole bunch of different ways you can start triathlons but this one started on the beach and you had to run into the water and so you know we're on the start line and I have like this flash of like yeah like let's get after it and then so I start running and I start like doing the dolphin dive where like you run and then you dive in you run and you dive in and then I start swimming and there's like Compared to when I did it a few years ago, there's twice the amount of people. So I am getting swam over, I'm getting bumped, and I start freaking out. And I'm like, I don't think I can front crawl. Like, I can't, like, control my breathing right now. Like, we're just going to breaststroke. And I'm just watching the field, like, slowly move away from me. And my boyfriend, he learned to swim as an adult. And so I was like, he's probably around here somewhere. And I look over, and he's, like, swimming right beside me. And I just go, I can't do this. 
Uh, he looks at me and he's like, oh no. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I was like, start talking to myself in my head. I'm trying to calm myself down because I'm like, I'm literally like two minutes into this race and I'm already like freaking out because A, I'm like not a strong swimmer. I like being in the water, but being around so many people and like people that are just like swimming over you is honestly quite scary. So I look at him, I'm like, I don't think I can do this. And then he like starts breaststroking. And then, I don't know, I had this like flash in my head where I was like, no, like just try to calm yourself down. Like, and I just made, I was still, there's still part of me that's like, maybe I could do well in this event because, and then, you know, I did well last time and whatever. And then I was like, no, your goal for today is to have fun and to get to the start line. A, you have not trained for this race. You haven't been on a mountain bike in two years besides the riding the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the course a couple days before. And you also haven't been on a uh, swimming very much this year. You've done like two open water swims and you've been injured with running. So like lower your expectations, girl, and just have fun. Like remember what it's like to have fun and move your body. And so... I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And so I start, I actually am able to find a rhythm where I feel comfortable doing front crawl and I don't have to breaststroke the whole time. And so I start doing front crawl. You know, I actually found like a nice little group to swim with for the first lap, which was quite helpful um, just to have other people to like sight and like keep you accountable. And yeah, it was, it was honestly quite nice to swim with others. And you did two course to, or two course, you did two laps of the swim course, but you had to come out of the water and like do a little 180 degree turn onto the beach. And for every event that I did, like the swim, the bike and the run, I had to do two laps of the course. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, that sucked, but I have to go do it again. And so swim the second lap and I definitely swim slower the second time, um, but made it out of the swim and I was like, okay, okay, the swim is done. And usually I feel quite confident on a road bike. And like once I finish the swim, I'm like, yeah, like we're on land, like we're gonna rock this. But I knew that the part I was most scared about was coming up next. And so I, I don't know, I'm not like a horrible swimmer, but I'm not by any means like a good swimmer, but I'm like very average. And But I knew there would probably be a lot of people that were, because this course was local and on local mountain bike trails, I figured that there was a lot of people that are really good at mountain biking that are like, yeah, let's try a triathlon. And I knew that I was probably going to get passed by a whole bunch of people that were slower at swimming, but better at biking and mountain biking than I was. And so I was quite nervous about having really skilled people that want to go faster come up behind me while I am like super nervous and not confident. Anyways, I had a really horrible transition. I couldn't get my wetsuit off very quickly. Like, I, honest, I had to, like, sit on the ground three times to pull my one leg, uh, my one, like, my wetsuit off, like, my own leg. And then I tried to eat some food, but I still felt sick, so I couldn't really stomach anything. And I was like, whatever, we're just going to hop on the bike and get going. And one of my friends came out, and she's, like, quite a good mountain biker. And I was like, okay, like, honestly, don't, like... I don't know. I was I was like, do I crush the flat sections of the course that are like on not super technical trails just to get past later? But I was having a lot of anxiety about that and getting past and just not feeling confident in my ability. So I kind of just like chilled on the bike the whole time in all honesty. And you have to bike. So our you have to bike from Boulevard over like across this road and like under the, the Trans Canada Highway and stuff. And then you get into all this single track stuff. And I was with a big group of people and I was fine biking with them on normal stuff. But as soon as it got to the technical stuff, I was like, oh my gosh. In comparison to how I rode, like pre-rode the course, I was, <laughs> I was honestly a decent amount more confident, but like in comparison to everyone else, like I was so slow, but I didn't have to get off my bike as many times as I did the first time around. And I was like, okay, okay. Like I, you know, I'm starting to gain confidence, but I am, I'm hopping off my bike to let people go by me like constantly because I don't know, there's just the pressure of having someone like behind you. And I just feel like it makes me more nervous and just makes like stupid mistakes because I'm worried about them instead of focusing on what I need to do. 
And so I let people go and I rode the trails and the, so the course, like right at the start, once you get on the single track trail, you do this like connector trail and then you get to the two hardest trails on the right or on the right, on the route. And I was super nervous about this one trail called Dagaba. And it, it's just so rooty and like little ups and downs and shale rock. And I just found it like incredibly hard to bike on when I did it on the course preview. And it had also poured rain the day before. And so everything was super slippery. And yeah, I ended up hopping off my bike and running a lot on this course or on this like specific trail Dagaba. But I mean, I did end up riding more of the course than I was able to do the day that I test rode it uh, with my boyfriend. And there's like this one little hill that like I had to walk down because I was scared of it. But both times on both route or like both laps of this course, I was able to stay on my bike and ride it. I was able to ride up a few more hills, but there was definitely, I was still moving very slow in comparison to how many people were riding the course. But yeah, I made it through Dagaba the first time and there's like, there's volunteers at like every corner and they're, they were wonderful. Like they were hyping me up. They're like, yeah, you got this. You look so strong, like way to go. And I'd be like, that was the toughest part. And now it's done. And they're like, yeah, like you got this girl. And I was like, yeah, I got this. And anyways, I finished Dagaba and I was like, okay, like we made it out and it honestly felt faster than before, which was like a little win on my shoulders. I was still getting past like left, right and center. And then we went over to Grand Chasm and this this trail and it's still quite technical, but compared to Dagobah, there's way less routes. And so I had, there were a few sections where like I just hopped off my bike and ran up some of the steep hills with routes on it. Um, Cause honestly, it probably takes me the same amount of time to run up with my bike as it does to like bike slowly and find the right line and whatnot. But yeah, made it through Grand Chasm and then I was like, okay, like the rest of the course, I'm not like gonna crush, but I do feel quite confident because they're just, they're trails with a lot less roots and it's just, there's something about the roots. I don't, I, so with mountain bikes, you can have like a full suspension bike where you have suspension in the front and in the back and it just makes for a smoother ride. I have a very, I was riding my mom's bike and it's a very entry level, like real bike brand, it's a Trek. No, it's a live, it's a live, a live mountain bike. And it just has like a coil fork in the front. Anyways, it's like, it was probably, it was a below average bike for the course, but it was, it was a bike nonetheless. Um, but I just didn't feel like very comfortable going over routes and stuff. I found that I bounced around a lot. And with cycling, you can get um, shoes that have little clips on the bottoms that you clip into your pedals so that your feet stay on your pedals. And it's a lot easier to like get over routes because when I, so I didn't ride with my feet clipped in because I was so nervous. I wanted to have my feet out so that I could just easily step down and whatnot. But that also meant that on any bumps, my feet were bouncing up and down. And so it was really hard to find the pedals and like actually pedal. So there was a lot of the trail where I would just kind of like bounce over the bike or over the bikes, bounce over the roots and um just go whatever speed that my bike was going because I couldn't, my feet weren't attached to the pedals, they were bouncing around. And so I was a little frustrated with that, but like, I don't know if I had been clipped in, had I crashed more? Anyways, I made the decision that I was gonna not put on clipless pedals, which is what I usually ride with on my road and gravel bike. And yeah, I made it through like all the sections. There's this one section that's like quite fun, like a lot of like ups and downs, but there's not a lot of routes. So I actually have quite, like for me, I have confidence riding through that. I'm sure I still rode slower than the majority of like competent mountain bikers that mountain bike all the time. Like they eat, sleep, breathe mountain biking. But for me, it was like, okay, this is a section that like, I know I can ride and I like don't have to get off my bike, which is like, anytime I don't have to get off my bike, I'm like, yeah, like I'm a mountain biker. And at this point, like once I got through the really technical sections, I was mostly just me in the trails. And I found that so nice. And it definitely felt less like a race for me because I, because I was so nervous, I wasn't really pushing myself aerobically. And it was a lot more of like, just get through this and like ride within my ability and just like have fun, enjoy yourself. And the sun was starting to come out. And anyways, 
I finished this like nice rolly section. There's one part where it like drops down super steep that I'm getting nervous for every time, but like both times on the loops, I did it and I was like, yeah. And anyways, this one guy comes up behind me. Did I drop a stitch? No, I didn't. This one guy comes up behind me and he's like, he's so chipper, he's so happy. And he's just like, I could tell he was stoked to be mountain biking because like he's one of those people that loves mountain biking, but like doesn't really swim and doesn't really run. But he's like, yeah. And so he's like, way to go, girl. And I was like, yeah, like I'm super nervous. Like I don't really like mountain biking, but like this is I'm actually kind of having fun. And then we get to this one part and my boyfriend and I actually made a wrong turn when we did our course preview and we went up this really, really steep hill but we didn't have to go up that steep hill. We got to go left and like down this hill, um, this like single track trail. And I was like, oh, I thought we had to go up the hill. He's like, oh, you didn't ride the course. I was like, well, I missed this section of it. He's like, so just so you know, there's like a jump line coming up. And I was like, okay, okay, like good to know. And so a jump line is when you have like little bumps that if you hit with speed, you'll get air. And so he's like, you know, I would just su suggest rolling over the bumps. And I was like, yeah, that is a great idea because I don't want to catch any air. And so anyways, this jump line is super fun. Like it's up and down. I don't think I'm hitting it with a lot of speed, but then we get to the last, it's like a tabletop. So it's like, it's like a, uh, like a trapezoid where it's like, oh, like angles. And then it's like a flat top. And so anyways, I come and I hit the first little thing and I get air. My whole body, except for my hands, is in the air and off my bike. Because my feet aren't clipped into the pedals, I, like, my feet just flew off when I get, when I got air and, like, my life starts flashing before my eyes. I'm like, this is where I die. There's a tree right in front of me. There's like roots and whatnot. And my, my feet aren't attached to my bike. My butt's not attached to my bike. My hands are the only thing attached to my bike. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna crash. I'm gonna break my collarbone. Oh my goodness. And so I'm like in the air. I don't know if you were like, if you had a video and you were filming me, I probably didn't get like that much air. But for me, I'm like, nothing is touching my bike except my hands. Miraculously, my butt found my bike seat. And I landed back on my, my bike and I'm like, oh my gosh, my feet, my feet are still in the air. And so I'm like, okay, I got my hands on the bike. I got my butt on the bike. And like, now I have to find my pedals because I can't bike if my feet aren't on my pedals. And so thankfully my hands are still on the bike, right? So I can steer it and I'm steering it away from the tree. And yeah, my, my feet found the pedals. My, my hands steered me away from the tree and we survived. But I was like, <laughs> that was scary. And so I was like, hey, next lap, like we're, we're not hitting that last thing with like any speed. Like we are just gonna roll over it. And so, yeah. Once, once I got through the first lap, I like looked at my watch and I was like, yep, like, you know, I thought I was going to be out here for two hours and I'm probably going to be out here for two hours on this bike, just, just surviving. Um, and at this point I could, I could feel that I didn't have enough fuel in me. Like I didn't eat breakfast that morning. I managed to get a banana in me, but like my stomach was just so upset that I, I couldn't really stomach anything. And so I'm like, okay, I need to really try to like take in like something. And I had a uh, a bottle on my bike with some some scratch nutrition in it, which just has like sugar and electrolytes and whatnot in it. And so I'm like, I need to try to finish this bottle by the time that I finish this next lap. And the next lap went surprisingly well. Again, I was by myself like the entire time, except for, <clears throat> excuse me, there was like one section where I actually passed a guy because his poor crap, his poor crap, his poor calf cramped up. And so, you know, I, because I was so comfortably aerobically, anytime I saw someone that was like off to the side, I'd always check with them and make sure they were okay and whatnot, because, you know, that's what I'd expect someone to do for me. And like, at this point, it was all just about finishing this, getting off this bike and finishing this triathlon because I was not prepared for it. But yeah, he, he said he was okay. And so I was like, okay, like I can go talk to the, to the people up front, but I did see him at the finish line. He finished. So that was awesome. Good on him. But yeah, I, I, the second lap went a lot smoother. I, by no means was I like crushing it, but I was definitely 
gaining a bit more momentum and I had to didn't have to hop off my bike as much as I did the first lap and I didn't have to hop up my bike as much as I did the first day that I previewed it. So there was definitely a thought in the back of my head that was like, mm, I kind of wish that I had done this course like a few more times uh, or ridden my mountain bike at all this summer, which I didn't do. And so like, you know, I, I set myself up to like not have the best race because I didn't at all prepare for it, but I finished the second leg or the second lap of the bike course and that like tabletop section with the jump line where I hit air, I rolled over that nice and smooth. I did not catch air. I was so happy and I was like, okay, like I got this, like we're going to run now and like running is my specialty. Like that is the thing where I feel most comfortable, but I got off my bike in the transition and thankfully this lovely volunteer like I was having a hard time because my so the difference between mountain biking and road cycling like the amount of muscles that you have to use mountain biking because you're like oftentimes out of your seat like trying to like you know whatever ride the the, the trail and feel it out and like if your seat's on it it's very bumpy and whatnot but if you're like up in the air you can kind of like embrace embrace the bumps a bit better but it just involves so much glute and hamstring activation that it made running after the bike so hard. And I also didn't fuel properly. So I am starting to bonk and bonks when you're like, I aerobically felt fine, but my body was like, girl, you did not fuel us. We cannot move forward. And I got these new shoes and they're Solomon's and they have this like little pocket to like shove the laces up into them. And I could not like shove the laces up. I don't know, I there was in transition. So anyways, I start running and I, I tuck them into the lace and I get out on the run course and I'm like, I'm running like, I'm like, I'm gonna catch everyone. I'm a runner. And I run like 400 meters into this run course and I freaking wipe out. And <laughs> I'm like splayed out on the trail. My leg is cut up, my arms are cut up. And I'm like, oh my God, like I have 900 or 9.6k left and I'm on the ground cut up and I'm like oh my gosh like I literally and it wasn't even a technical part of the trail it was I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee it was a part of the trail that was like double track and wide and anyways I'm like okay and then like my parents friend runs by and he's like you got this get up and you'll pass me in like a minute and I was like yeah 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 I'm gonna do that and so anyways, I get up and I finally figure out the little pocket. I like, I'm like, I don't care how long it takes me. Like at this point, again, I just need to finish this race. And if I sit here for two minutes trying to figure out how to put my stupid laces in this little tiny pocket, I'm good. And it, it wasn't that hard. I think I was just exhausted at this point. I had been racing for like two hours and 45 minutes and I still had like over 9K left to run. So I get back up and I start running, but my hamstring, my right hamstring, which I've been having difficulties with since the spring is just like, it is so painful. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, no, like I can do this. So I start running and I'm running fast and I'm passing people and I'm like feeling good. And then I get to this like really steep hill and my hamstring just like locks out. And I... I had a hard time. I stopped and I cried and I sat in the bush and it was right by volunteers. So they're like, honey, like, do you want us to call anyone? And I was like, no, I just like, I honestly just need to calm down and like, just think about things. And so I'm like sitting there and I'm upset because my body hurts and I'm frustrated because aerobically I feel fine. But like my body is like, girl, like we can't, we can't do this right now. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm like, I DNF'd, which is did not finish a race one time. And the pain of not finishing a race was honestly, like it was a lot. And I was like, if I have to like walk run this course, like I'm, I'm gonna be so proud of myself if I get to the end of this course with everything that's going on right now. And so I'm like, no, like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk it out a little bit and like just try to run like under my, the pain threshold of my hamstring. Because if I, if I just ran easy, my hamstring didn't really flare up. And if I walked up the uphills, it was fine. So anyways, I'm like, no, it's like phase, but I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna walk for a little bit. And it was honestly this, uh, my parents, a diff, like a, the wife of my friends of my parents, she runs by me and I'm like, 
you know, she's like, oh, are you okay? And so anyways, I ran with her for like a few minutes and we just talked and we kind of, you know, she's not the best mountain biker and was super nervous about the race and the mountain bikes. So we just talked about that and it kind of just took my mind off my hamstring and gave me some time to just like run a little slower, reframe, refocus. And I, I was like, thank you so much for being there. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little better. I'm just going to pick it up like a little bit. And so passed her and then wound up passing like a decent amount of people on that first lap. And I wasn't running aerobically where I could run, but I was running where my hamstring was more or less at bay and at a pace that I knew I could finish with. But yeah, my body, I, I had a gel, which is just like a little package basically of sugary things with a, a electrolytes to help your body uh, re replenish its fuel as you're exercising. And so I'm running with this gel and I'm slowly sipping, taking little sips of it. Um, cause I knew even though it didn't taste great, I just knew that I had to get some sugar in me because my body was, was not doing great. It was definitely running on empty and yeah, finished the first lap. And then I, I was like, okay, once I get past like that hill where my hamstring flared up, I knew that I would be okay. And it was, the second lap, so because even like my easy pace is still fairly fast to like the average person. And so I was still passing people despite me not running at like what I would consider like a full effort. It was definitely nice to have someone ahead of me to just like focus on that instead of just like being alone in the trails and just, just being alone with my thoughts. Um, and so yeah, I, I wound up passing a few people. I, I walked at all the steep uphills because my hamstring just did not like any, like when I had to run um, up anything super steep. And I was like, you know, again, I just need to get to the finish line. And <laughs> it was nice because, so I was like, I just want to pass like as many women as possible, basically. And that was kind of a goal. And so just keep up a pace where, you know, you're, you're moving down people, you're hunting down people. And I passed a lot of people on that second lap and I, I finished strong. I, yeah, I ended up doing the race in three hours and 24 minutes. And honestly, I thought I was going to be closer to four hours with the bike. I biked faster than I thought I would be. Like I thought I'd be around two hours based off of my course preview, but I was like an hour 52. So that was good. The swim didn't go that great, but I finished and I just chugged water and Gatorade and I would because I was just like my body was so so tired and it just felt so so um like depleted I just knew I need to get as much water because I I yeah I only had one bottle cage on my bike which I did end up finishing all of that nutrition but for a three hour race or three and a half hour race, like I definitely needed to have more than I did. And so that's a lesson for next time because I do want to do this race again and I do want to get better at mountain biking. But yeah, I finished the line. My parents were there. My boyfriend was there. He did amazing. He, um, he did like two hours and 58 minutes. He had like the fourth or fifth fastest like bike time of the day. He swam really well for him. He was having some major issues on the run as well with just body cramping and things not really functioning the way that we, we both wanted to. Um, but yeah, it was super nice for us to do this together. And I was so proud of myself for finishing. I was so proud of him for finishing. And yeah, I got to see a whole bunch of friends that I haven't seen for a long time. Like the atmosphere at the Xterra is just so chill and relaxed. Like this one woman who's like a boss mountain biker, like she was talking to me afterwards and giving me some tips and like, it was just so welcoming and so fun and definitely want to do it again. Definitely want to actually ride my mountain bike because there was definitely moments out on the course where the sun was coming in through the trees and it was just me and this nice trail with all this lush vegetation. And I was like, this is actually kind of fun. And I know that like, if I did it more, I would definitely gain confidence because even as I, I rode like the course three times throughout my trip here and each time I got a little more confident. So I could just imagine how much more confidence I would have gained if I had ridden the course like once a week um, throughout the summer building up to this event. Obviously I'm probably not gonna be in Thunder Bay all of next summer, but just riding on mountain bike trails once or twice a week throughout like the, the spring and summer season, I think would definitely help gain some confidence. And yeah, overall it was such a fun event. I am 
yeah, today I'm feeling good because I finished it and I really did not want to go to the start line because I was just so nervous about finishing it, about, you know, having high expectations for myself. But it was really nice just to finish and have fun and see friends and just be part of this wonderful trail community that's building in Thunder Bay. And yeah, that was, this is a longer video than I typically will do for my knit into the week with me, but I don't know. I want to get my thoughts out. A few of you seemed interested in it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I got a decent section done on my mom's slipover. Again, I'm hoping to finish this today, and so yeah, that was my knit into the weekend with me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you saw and also if you want to hear a bit more about my experiences with training and racing of a bunch of different races i've done running races gravel races triathlons um i haven't done any just solid swim races but yeah let me know i would probably do it in more of like a knit and chat knit into the week with me format um yeah, I'm excited to get better at things. It's funny, I was talking to people afterwards and I was like, I suck at mountain biking. Like that's like the reality of it is I'm not very good at it, but it means that I can only get better from here, which is kind of nice to be at a place where you're not that great at something. And just the ceiling is so high. Cause like, I feel like to get better at running, I do have to like train a lot, a lot, a lot, but to get better at mountain biking, I feel like I'll have those like beginner gains just from getting out more often, where with running, I actually <laughs> have to put in a lot of time and effort and do some pretty hard workouts to see that improvement. But with mountain biking, I'm so new to it that I every time I go out, I get better, where with running, it's not that case anymore. So yeah super fun. I am excited to spend the rest of the this nice Sunday with my parents and my boyfriend. We're going to go to Fort William Historical Na uh, National Park, I believe is what it's called, or Fort William Historical Park, something on those lines uh, this afternoon with our dogs. And yeah, nice. The sun is shining. It's going to be a good day. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It means a lot to me and I can't wait to watch this channel grow. So till next time, see ya.